Well, here we are. We've made it to the end of the IFL season. And this week in indoor football, it's playoff time. It's playoff time. And everything kind of worked out in the end. You know, we really thought here and other places as well, we thought that, you know, hey, maybe we could count those Louisville games for something. But no, those didn't get counted for anything. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. That those games did not get counted. You know. Because that would have been a whole mess of things. A whole mess of things in regards to what the IFL is trying to build here for this playoffs. And we have four playoff games here for the first round, two in the second round, and finally the United Bowl. So these quarterfinals here, these quarterfinals are going to be interesting, I think, in all honesty. Um, I'll tell you my pick for the IFL champion in just a moment, but let's go over these, let's go over these teams that are in the playoffs first. Um, and the first matchup is the Bismarck Bucks and the Massachusetts Pirates. The Pirates have been on a tear the last few weeks, and they won eight straight games. And they beat Bismarck a couple times, I believe, and just not, and it wasn't really competitive. Um, I don't believe Bismarck has enough juice. I mean, yeah, they went seven and eight, you know, and they, they have had some good games this season. But honestly, most of the Bismarck's wins were against Green Bay, which really tells you a lot. Because Green Bay is not in the playoffs. They're not. And Bismarck's just going to have to show up. Really, really show up against Mass. And I don't think they will do that. So there, that, that's the first playoff game. That'll be at 6 o'clock on Saturday. Next up is Spokane and Frisco. Now, Frisco dominated Spokane a couple weeks back. However, it is rather unfortunate. It is rather unfortunate that the fighters um, kind of just completely folded, you know, <laughs> uh, this past Saturday night against Arizona, which does not bode well for their championship chances. I mean, I get it. They got guys like Malik Henry, but they playing it way too close, Frisco has, the entire season. And even during the game in which they pretty much blew Spokane out, and they've blown teams like, pretty much blown teams like Duke City out as well, they, the game still felt like they were close. That is Frisco's real problem. So the games feel a bit too close for comfort, in all honesty. And Spokane, Spokane's just... They were having such a great season, and then I don't know what happened to them. I really don't know what happened to make them, you know, to get the, like they they were they were legit at the beginning of the season. They lost so many games in a row, and so many out of however many games it's been. Because I mean, they were they were at the top. Uh, they were nearly at the top of the IFL a few weeks ago, and now they're near the middle of the pack now. It doesn't make any sense, really. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, Spokane's gone through a lot of injuries and stuff like that. And, uh, I mean, they just haven't been able to keep it together, in all honesty. So I think, you know, that will fare well for the Fires. I'm thinking, you know, most of the top teams will go all the way through. That's, that's what prediction. Oh! Um, also on Saturday night at the same time will be Duke City at Iowa. Duke City has been inconsistent, but Iowa has been just about as inconsistent. So it's kind of a toss up there, you know. I mean, you got Duke City who got swept by Tucson, and you got Iowa who's just been up and down all season long. Very consistent team, you know. But they have, you know, the Barnstormers could potentially, you know take it all away, but I don't think they will. I honestly don't think they will. I'm, I'm picking Duke City to win this quarterfinal game. You know, and I, I think, I think, you know, I think Duke City has enough of the tank to go to the semifinals. You know? um, and then on Sunday, you know, the only other game of these playoffs will be, um, at least for the first round, will be on a Sunday, and it will be Sioux Falls and Arizona. Sioux Falls and Arizona met way back when, 
earlier in the season, in like early May. And these are two totally different teams. Now, Drew Powell, I mean, he's leading the Rattlers. I mean, what can you say about Drew Powell that has already been said? Man can just do whatever he wants on the football field. He can run, he can throw, he can make it look easy out there. And the Rattlers have, you know, just, you know, we really thought they were going to be a little bit down after, you know, the whole Massachusetts thing. But here they are again, number one seed. And even though Sioux Falls has been struggling, I think they have a little bit of something, you know, that can keep Arizona down a little bit. Remember, Arizona cannot get smacked in the mouth. If Arizona gets smacked in the mouth, uh, like they did against Massachusetts, like they did against Sioux Falls that first, that their first or second game of the season. Uh, I don't think will bode well. So, but Sioux Falls has been very inconsistent as well. A lot of these teams are just really inconsistent. You know, you know they're good, but they're inconsistent as hell. You know, that that's really the only thing here for the IFL to you know for these eight teams you know, <clears throat> to really you know think about because all of them have weaknesses and you know Massachusetts even though they've won eight straight they have some weaknesses as well you know like I, I, I just don't know I just don't know you know who's going to take home this championship but I do have a prediction I do have a prediction I think that you will see you know I think you will see the four teams you know the four teams being Massachusetts, Frisco, Duke City, and Arizona, they will advance to the semifinals. And yes, I am picking Massachusetts to beat Frisco. I know, I know, right? I am picking the Pirates to beat Frisco. I'm picking Arizona to beat Duke City. And then in the United Bowl, my pick for the United Bowl champion will be the Massachusetts Pirates. I know. But they're being, they, I mean, it seems like, you know, Arizona. Massachusetts are on a collision course, you know, right now. Personally, don't believe Iowa has it in the tank. I don't believe Frisco has it because they've been very inconsistent. You can't, you can't do it. You can't, you can't play the way you've been playing all season long. That's not a recipe for success. I don't think Duke City has it just yet. I think, you know, they had a lot of momentum going for them, but then they kind of squandered it. And Sioux Falls, and Spokane, and, and, and Bismarck, I just don't have any hope in. I don't have any faith in either of those three teams. So yeah, that's my predictions for the IFL in the playoffs. As far as other leagues go, there's really only one other league to talk about, and that is the AWFC. Um, we do know that they will have a playoff semifinal, and we don't know when you know the uh, we don't know when the championship and stuff like that will be. Um, I think it'll be in September as well, um, if I'm not mistaken. But they had trouble finding an arena for the semifinal, so you know, here's what it is with that. Uh, and in the long run, you know, the AWFC looking like they're gonna be all right. You know, they're gonna be all right. You know, they're, you know, there's all sorts of different rumors popping up about them. Are they going to fold? Are they going to add some more teams and stuff like that? Um, but who knows? What we do know is that we have playoffs for the AWFC as well. And I don't really have any predictions for that. Um, actually, who is even all up in the AWFC playoffs? Give me a second. Okay, okay. Yeah, so it will be the Oregon High Desert Storm, the expansion team from the AWFC, taking on the Idaho Horsemen, who have founded the league and have basically been the money drivers in this league in a Monday night playoff game on August the 30th. It'll be very interesting to witness that. Um, hopefully we find like a live stream or something for that, because I mean, that'd be, that'd be nice, you know, some Monday night football. I'd, I'd be down for that. Um, and then the winner of the semifinal will go on to face the Tri-City Rush in the championship game, which again will probably be sometimes in September. And I'll talk about that in the last This Week in Indoor Football video, which will be on September the 12th. So that will be the last time I come to you with indoor football content for a while. Um, yeah, the IFL schedule is probably going to be released sometime in September, probably after the playoffs are done. 
um, and I'm not going to really talk about it. Um, we are gearing up here on this channel, and you've already seen from yesterday, college football is back. So was the NFL, so we're gearing up for four videos a week talking about college football and the NFL, so you know, gearing up for that. So that's going to be very, very fun. Um, but yeah, um, I, I've made some predictions and projections about the CIF and the NAL for their off seasons, but for the IFL specifically, I think there is a couple things that we need to go over here, you know, for the off season. You know, it's been rumored, maybe confirmed, who knows, that the IFL is running with 16 teams in 2022. Yeah, who knows? Again, who knows how accurate that is? And it, be and it is believed that Cedar Rapids is just not coming back. There hasn't really been any mention of them at all. But, you know, that, I don't know. There could be further defections from the IFL. There is that rumor of somebody moving down to the CIF. But who knows how accurate that rumor is at this time. And a lot of people are speculating that it's the Naz Wranglers. Um, who knows how true that rumor is for the IFL, you know. And as far as, you know, getting it right, you know, getting it right, you know, just just get the money right this time. Get the money right. You know, you cannot have another Louisville situation next year. You cannot have that. It's unprofessional. You want to be, you want to be professional, and a lot of people have been, oh well, maybe we could pay the players more money, you know, and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, stadium is free over the air television. Uh, I mean, there are people flocking the stadium on Saturdays. No, no, people are not flocking the stadium to watch Conference USA football. They're flocking the stadium just to get some, just to be bored, you know, just to kill out their boredom for that day. So there's nothing really interesting in the stadium, I'm not going to lie to y'all. Um, but, but the IFL deal with stadium is a good thing. It's a good thing. It's not the greatest thing. It's, good, it's a good thing, though. It's a good thing. Um, <clears throat> but we need to get the advertising in order. Again, going back to money, we need to get the advertising in order. We need to get butts in seats out here. <clears throat> and if you can't do that in Vegas... Can't do that in, if you can't do that in Vegas. Vegas will be gone within the year. You know you can't you cannot do that. Columbus, I think, will be all right. You know, and so is the other teams that maybe got be back. Of course, you know you got the Bay Area Panthers now. You know, down there in San Jose, not the San Jose SaberCats, but the Bay Area Panthers. Yeah. So I guess that will be something new. You know, a little old. I guess it's a renewal of a rivalry. Um. But how will these new teams fare, you know, for 2022, if they even play, you know? Who knows? Who knows? But mostly the really big the really big thing that I want the IFL to do is get their money in order. Get their money in order. Get those advertisements out there. Get those butts in the seats. Get those butts in the seats. And make sure that stadium deal, make sure, make sure it works out. Make sure it works out. You can't have a situation... You know, where it's like you're being relegated to, you know, like ESPN 3 or something like that from back in the day when you talk about the AFL or CBS Sports Network. You know, make sure that stadium deal works out. You know, maybe try and go on to bigger and better things, you know, if the money is there. But who knows? Who honestly knows at this point? <clears throat> But yeah, that's going to pretty much do it. That's going to wrap this one up in a neat little bow. And I'll see you on September the 12th. And it will be late at night on September the 12th, though. So, you know, probably like around 10 or 11 o'clock, you know. So, so again, I'll, I'll see you guys there. And let's just hope for a great playoffs for both the AWFC and the IFL. Okay? Take care, everybody. Have a good Sunday.